I'm very excited to um, chat to David Alka today. Thank you so much for joining me, David. Absolutely. Uh, Pleasure and honor to be here. <laughs> I'm <yes>. so excited. <laughs> me too. Well, well um, you are in Denver all the way um, in Colorado. You do a lot of interesting things. Um, tell me, who is David Alcott? Who, what got you to where you are here in this part of your journey? Great. Um, I grew up in the Florida Keys, those little dots on the end of Florida, right? Yeah. So uh, Big Pine Key was my my uh, my hometown, if you will, a little small place, less, less than 2,000 people. I think we got a stoplight when I was 17 or 18 was our first one. We had a big parade around it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm actually not even being facetious. We really did have that. <laughs> our big grocery store, our big light, our first stop sign, you know, it was kind of crazy. But uh, good people for sure. Very thankful. And I, I really grew up on the Flipper show. You know, if you remember the the, the porpoises that you used to have, there was a yeah. television show that they had. Mm -hmm. Well, we actually had two beautiful porpoises that actually lived on our canal system. So after school, we would go in and swim with the dolphins every day. Oh, so wow. I have lived a, an incredibly wonderful life right from the beginning, for sure. Um, then there are trials and tribulations, for sure. But it's on everybody's path. Yeah. Coming out of the Florida Keys, went to school in FIU, University of Miami, got involved in banking, or at least I thought I was going to get involved in banking. And we were right then going into the 1991, which was the SNL crisis, if you remember yeah. that. So, of course, yeah. I was thinking I was going to go that way, studied finance in school. And the universe took me in a very different path. And a friend of mine got me involved in running a campaign, a campaign in politics in Florida. And so I went that road for a couple of years, about five years. And then got involved in real estate and worked with the number one selling real estate agent of the world. And then I met Tony Robbins on my path kind of stuff. And I went to work for him for a couple of years. And I've been very blessed with finding really great teachers in my life. And of course, then working with Neil Donald Walsh for the last 26 oh, wow. years. Um, he's been a mentor with me. And of course, his remarkable books and works, you know, 40,000 pages, something crazy. Uh, but the Conversations with God series that I've just been enamored with, and I read it mm -hmm. at least once or twice a year, every single wow. year since I've had it in my library kind of stuff. And it just, it's one of those things that, you know, you get that feeling, Michelle, where just something resonates with you just so completely uh, that that really helped me on my journey of understanding there's a very practical corporate world to live in, if you will, if you're going to be in business. But there's also a different approach to that world. And that's bringing a soulful approach as opposed to kind of the approach we're doing right now with, it just seems like we're bringing nothing but ego, right? To the table mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's having its effect on the world. And mm -hmm. if we're really going to want a significant change, then we've got to bring something else to the party, right? And yeah. so that's kind of my journey this lifetime now with Samurai Success for the last 26 years. And of course, I've been in coaching for the last 30, 35 years plus. Mm -hmm. um, but that's been really been my journey is to find a way to create a bridge between the real change elements in America, especially our business owners and a new soulful approach to being a business owner and stop having to go for all the material stuff. It's an important part of being practical, but there's also a larger, bigger part of really being in service of others. So that's where we are. Okay. Um, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, um, I almost, I almost feel like I have to ask what brought that because there's usually a um a, there's a good word and it'll come to me afterwards but kind of an impact point as to a turnaround um I hear uh, real estate I hear uh, you know a material world kind of that stuff to make that change and to see that soulful aspect to life usually has a personal uh, awakening no revelation maybe process maybe even a, a darkness to it um if mm -hmm. i can be um yeah personal but but there is usually something like that was there something like that for you oh gosh yes multiple things like this because i don't know if you know anybody like this but i apparently am incredibly stubborn so <laughs> I don't seem to learn really fast one time. So the universe just keeps providing opportunities for the cosmic two by four to hit you over the head. So I've got a lot of bumps. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. goodness I have so much hair because if you saw the <laughs> underneath there, it's just full of bumps and concaves and just damage yeah. points for the universal two by four. But being stubborn, being a control freak, I really just got to a place where it was like, this isn't working. Mm. I've got... 
I got what everybody was telling me I should be getting, right? I'm going for, I was getting the girl. I was getting the, this, I was getting the house. Getting. The, I was following this path that mm. everybody said I should. I saw it in movies. I saw it in books. I saw it in my neighbors kind of stuff. This is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get this material stuff. Yeah. Doing really well with all that. And yet, and, and the debt that goes along with that, right? And that I wasn't even affected by that. I was dealing with that pressure fine. But there was something inside of me that was unfulfilled would be the best word. Mm. So how I got here was through a lot of that darkness and pain you talked about. Mm. And thankfully, I didn't let that. And I was well on my way to letting that pain and darkness fill me up and going a very different direction. And that's why I got that first book, Conversations with God, and it allowed me to start seeing it from a different approach. And I don't think I've ever had that experience with written material that resonates so completely with me that it just, I was sitting there reading this book, right? I was, I was working in the corporate world and I'm not to get too explicit, but I'm sitting in the middle of my bed, I'm in my underwear and I'm crying my eyes out in the shelf that I'm just so affected by the words that was were in there. And I was like, there was a moment that finally realized that a loving father, a loving God would never put me on this planet without resources. Yeah. And I was just missing those resources. I had to go be a seeker. Yeah. yeah. Because that wisdom seeker, right, is only given to those students that are willing to get past the surface of things. You can live a very surface life. It's available for all of us. And a lot of us are doing it. I was doing it. Mm. But I knew there was something deeper. And then if I knew there was something deeper, then I had to do something about it. I had to dive in deep. Yeah. My first response was to dive in deep outside and everything I could read, the knowledge, the books, the tapes, you know, going to the seminars. I, would, I went full junkie, right, about going to these places. <laughs> and I was truly seeking. And yet it wasn't having the impact mm. because I wasn't taking that information and applying it to me. Yeah. Once I started doing that, shall everything shifted. Didn't shift overnight, but I yeah. felt the fulfillment. I felt the light. I felt less weight of responsibility and suffering that I've been through for some part of my life. That was like, okay, I'm just done with this. I want to do something different. Mm. Apply the information internally, and things started shifting. And that all comes more from a heart center, isn't it? That's the head has its functions um but it doesn't help us necessarily in that seeking in that connection um which i think you found in that conversations with god because there's a connection there's a there's an answer there's somebody that shows you um endearment and you know there's love it's love <laughs> yeah and going to that heart center, that mind, right? The, the mm -hmm. ego, the body, all these four elements. So there's the mind, there's the body, there's the soul, and there's the ego. Mm -hmm. And all those are, let's just call them elements or tools to be used. I know that sounds a little crazy, but yeah. from my adventure, my experience of this, you actually creating, taking those four things and actually integrating them into a new aspect, mm -hmm. which we call the fifth element. Mm -hmm. So you take those four elements and what really happens is make it practical is these four things are no longer using you, you're using them. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, it's, it's not a small shift. When I started using my ego, as opposed to my ego using me, Michelle, it was night and day. It was so yeah. revolutionary that I, that I was like, what the heck just happened? And yeah. then I started having fun here mm -hmm. and all the stress that was built up in the ego using me turned into a very different experience of I'm now using my ego to then, you know, find out who I am and experience who I am because mm -hmm. without that part of me, I can't have that knowingness. Yeah. So, and, and, yeah. yeah. And that's true mastery, isn't it? Mm. That's a beautiful word, a word that I truly am enamored with this lifetime and want and, and want to experience that part of me. So Samurai success is the name of our, our company. Samurai loosely translated means in service of others. Mm. So in service of others, success. So at Samurai success, we focus on being able to apply that information here. As a matter of fact, all of our training and with all of our coaches is that you got to work on you mm. because if your stuff is still in the way, when I'm meeting with you as a coach, I'm just working on my stuff with you. You're paying me to work on my stuff. And we call that getting the hell 
out of the way. <laughs> yeah. I've got to work on me so that I can truly be present for you. There's mm -hmm. nothing else more important in this moment but right now. Mm -hmm. And that's what we all seek from that hard connection, that soul connection, is to have someone in our lives that is just, just listen to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you do that without being present? You don't, because I'm just waiting for my time to talk. Mm -hmm. It's very different whenever you can get to that place beyond the heart, beyond those things. And that's what we talk about a lot in the book of Swords of Illumination. It's a, it's a way to fulfill this idea about how do you do this? Yeah. Well, to get to your heart, to get to your mind, to get to your body, you have to know who you are. Mm -hmm. And that identity about who you are drives every part of the conversation you and I are going to have today. Mm -hmm. It all begins with that. And what I found in my journey, and that's why we wrote the book, really focusing on this, um, mm -hmm. is that you as an individual get to create that one thing on this planet. You get to create your identity about who you say you are mm -hmm. so that you can experience that while you're here in the physical plane. That allows you to get to your heart because if your heart is connected to who you are, then you're going to be heart centered. If yeah. you're or if you connect with your mind, then you're going to be mind-centered. If you connect with your body, you're going to be body-centered. And by the way, there are representations of all these on the planet, right? That we're seeing this. But there are fewer of us being able to integrate all four of those into a brand new perspective, truly being who you are and doing things on this planet because it simply represents that. Because there's, for some of us, there is no choice. But to go into that seeking mode, to connect to the heart, to uh, you talk about the illusion of separation as well um, in, you know, creating us, uh, creating a separation of us to the bigger picture. The bigger mm -hmm. picture is really, um, I think, where... Some of us, as you say, a lot of people are happy with with that lifestyle where everything is um, superficial. I, I'm not sure I understand whether they, you know, I don't understand that concept so well, but there are people that aren't seekers um, in this lifetime, maybe, maybe in the next one, um, they might be. So you also talk about destiny. So illusions of separation and kind of destiny how do those that overlap like how do we how do you see us connecting to that part of us just going with the small questions right away i see <laughs> we might as well just do it <laughs> i love you this is awesome <laughs> all right so let's see if we can break that down a little bit from my understanding about this my experience about it, is that there are certain universal laws that exist here in this physical plane. I'm here as a human being. There's the physical plane. And then there's the third dimension, which is the spiritual physical plane. And these things all interact with each other. Mm -hmm. Yet I have a great amount of influence that I didn't know about when I was younger that I have so much impact today on because I actually know that by creating the identity the way I am creating it, and consciously writing it down and reminding myself of who I am on a constant basis, I actually influence the universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the reason why one of the laws exists, the law of contrast, this illusion of disunity, mm -hmm. this feeling that we're not connected, the feeling that we're actually separate is an absolute illusion that the ego is very much in control of. Mm -hmm. It wants you to feel that because without that ability, your ego can't feel significant. It can't feel unique. It can't feel um, that it's doing something because it's already part of the collective. So the ability to do that is a remarkable thing that we do as human beings. And we actually can feel like we're separate. That's the benefits. The consequences of that, of course, allows me to then hurt you because by hurting you, I'm not really hurting me. And we forget that connection. So a lot of the pain that we're you know, having in this physical plane is because of this illusion of separateness. Mm -hmm. Without that, though, you can't experience who you are. So mm -hmm. as many seekers as there are on the planet, we don't want, well, whether we do or we don't, there's yeah. never going to be a place where there's all of us are just doing the same thing. We're like, we're all seekers because yeah. there has to be the contrast. Mm -hmm. Let's imagine you and I are all six feet tall mm -hmm. and everybody on the planet is six feet tall. Mm -hmm. 
the word tall would no longer be needed because exactly. there would be no contrast between what's tall and what's not tall, right? Yeah. The word would not even need to be in existence. So because there is that short, tall, heavy, white, poor, rich, all these contrasts are there to support one thing, your ability to experience who you say you are. Okay, wait, let me let me just um, digest this for a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but <laughs> so um, th this kind of what comes to mind is that the word normal doesn't exist either, you know, because we are all separate. We are all uniquely us. So these expressions are, are physical expressions of who we are, white woman, blue eyes, Black, dark hair those are those are um not real those are of no significance really as to who i am beautifully said and they have everything to do with who you are who i seem to be so yeah. i am who i think you see me as you know that's that's how i show up yes um, and in different cultures, in different societies, that will have different um, influences on my identity. So if I live in North America, I will be, you know, experiencing life as a white woman um, differently as when I live in the jungles of Kenya as mm. a white woman. Yes. Um, yeah. But I'm still the same person. So to connect to that same person, to connect to myself um, and to create. I love how you talk about, you know, we we don't always only remember who we are because we also create who we are. We we decide who we want to be and we con continuously show up as that. Um, yeah, so, so there's, there's a little bit of a, I'm trying to understand <laughs> kind of that separateness but I am still part of a tribe, whether I live in Kenya in the jungle and whether the other tribe members are Kenyan, Black or Maasai or whatever they show the world to be, you know, their, their outer um, body physical manifestation is the word I'm looking for, um, you know, but, but that could that connection, that soul connection has got nothing to do with those things. Um, and I think as seekers, that's part of my journey. And, and I think other seekers have a similar um, objective to connect to other souls, to that one of one. Like um, there is no average, there is no normal, there is no, there is no separation but we can only see that in the separation, if that makes any sense. You can only experience <laughs> it in the separation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Our brains have limits mm. currently, right? That we're dealing with. So making things very logical and linear straight line, mm. which is interesting because we're creating straight lines, but the universe doesn't create straight lines. No, no straight lines in the universe. No. Yeah. We have to think in straight lines. So how do we take something that seems to be circular in nature and turn it into something that's very straight line. Well, that's the power that you and I have as human beings that we create meanings with things. Mm. Which aren't always so linear for some of us. I well, linear yes. it. And not so much yeah. common sense, apparently. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, we, we, there's, the jury's out on common sense, whether it yeah. actually still exists or not. Um, but, but yeah. So, so yeah, I love how you say that. Um, that illusion of of contrast is what makes us us if if we can navigate it as um the separateness in the unity um <laughs> yeah and it's to articulate it is very confusing sometimes mm. because we're we're brains are constantly thinking in the world of this or that mm. In order to have the conversation you and I are having, we have to have a conversation this and that. Yeah. And we actually talk about it in the book about changing the world of or to the world of and. Yeah. 
for example, this logo behind me is part of the yin yang. Yeah. All right. And I'm always pronouncing it just off. So yeah. Apologize for that. But the idea here is that in the Western, especially America, we have this coin concept that says there's heads or there's tails. Mm. So we go through life like this mutual exclusive concept in this physical realm that actually works. But if we're going to start having a spiritual conversation, that law doesn't apply. Mm -hmm. Because in the universe of spiritualness, it's this and that which is better represented by this symbol because both dark and light, love and evil are exist on the same surface, on the same face of that symbol, as opposed to having to turn it around to see the other side of it. It exists simultaneously in this and universe with us. Hmm. Go ahead. And, and that's us too. I mean, we're not physical or spiritual. We, and I see that a lot in the world within the wisdom seekers as well. People, you know, I don't have time. I need to, to be physical. I need to work and be in this material world you know, rabbit holes and, and all these things. <laughs> I don't really have time for that. But for me, there's, there's no, you know, there is no binary aspect to us as as um, individuals, as souls, as whatever manifestations of the divine, maybe. Um, there is, yeah, there is everything at the same time. Yes everything everywhere at the same time <laughs> there it is yeah. <laughs> sounds like a great title for an oscar-winning movie <laughs> yes we should tell someone <laughs> and that's where we're getting to as a society i mean to be able to produce a film like that today is remarkable because there has to be an audience for it no film yeah. producer is going to spend five ten fifty million dollars on something that's not going to give them a return they're never going to get investors so there has to be a market for it. There has to be enough of the demographics that are seeking this knowledge. Mm -hmm. As we come into this physical plane, what gets a little confusing and it's it's important to discern, show you and I at an ultimate level of spiritualness, our divinity. Mm -hmm. That is it. That's as far as you can go with expressing your identity about who you are from in spiritual terms. Mm -hmm. I am divinity. And there is no one on this planet that is not that. Yeah. It's just the degree in which we've forgotten that. Yeah. And that degree of forgetfulness is what causes us to get hooked and attached to this physical plane and buy into the illusions that are here. Yeah. But those illusions that are here are designed for one purpose so that you can take your knowingness about who you are, divinity, and then take a single aspect of that divinity pull it into an identity statement and then move into this physical plane where all these natural and, and other laws exist called these illusions so that we can ex experience that aspect of divinity. Because in the world of divinity, you do not have that option of experiencing that because you are everything that is, you are the light. How does the light experience itself as the light without darkness? It yeah. does not. And there we so, go back to the yin and yang, isn't it? There it is. Yeah. Hmm. And the beautifulness of that, the magnificence of it, that I as a soul asked the father to come to this place and every single one of us did. Hmm. We've forgotten that. And that's why we're treating this place the way it is. This is hmm. a playground for us to experience us because we don't get a chance to do that. We're going to be able to do all the spiritualness that we want when we go back to the other dimension. That's a guaranteed Mm. What's not guaranteed is if you're going to truly live this aspect of divinity, you've chosen through your identity statement as an experience. Mm. And that's what we're missing out on. So it's time to remember that aspect. We're here as divinity mm. and we can bring divinity source in here, but it's very important to live in this practical world of this physical plane. So that we can experience that because that's what we've come here to do. Every single one of us from a soul perspective has a singular intention to come here to experience that which we say we are. What the book is about is understanding that those things are created by two perspectives. Either you're going to live an identity that someone else has chosen for you, 
very well-meaning people, by the way, your parents, your mm -hmm. church, your, your neighborhood, society, whether you live in the jungle or you live in the city, mm -hmm. all these things have an impact on that. And that's a choice that you get to make. Or there's a different choice. And that choice is where you consciously create who you are. Mm -hmm. And that creates a very different experience of the same physical plane. Yeah. I'm going to end it here for this for this episode <laughs> because I would love to to dive a little bit deeper. Um thank you David. Uh, I'm not saying goodbye. I'm just saying <laughs> until, until the next one. <laughs> Wonderful to be here. Thanks so much. Thank you.